YouTube, what's up? It's Curtis back, C3 Garage Media. Hey guys, today uh, is a is the day that we are going to uh, be replacing the blown turbo on the IS300. As you guys probably saw in my last video, um, the turbo started leaking some oil and um, burning oil under heavy boost. So uh, we are going to go ahead and. Uh, get this new turbo we got from CX Racing and uh, begin the process of tearing this apart and get it on. So I know you've been here before, but I will take you back with me. Maybe a little more in depth look this time. Coolant lines disconnected and out of the way. Get the oil uh, feed line up and out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the down pipe up and down at the bottom get that out of the way and then we can start unbolting the turbo so I do also need to uh, loosen that outlet there All right. get the down pipe out of the way now you can see that tile wastegate that we put on you can see the wrap manifold down pipes out of the way so now I can get to the bolts for the turbo and uh, everything else looks pretty good down here hey guys so I'm in the process of pulling out the old turbo uh, to put my new turbo in for what I thought was a blown turbo because I had oil coming back up through the seal of my turbo well guys just to give you a quick look Everything looks pretty nice in there as it is with the turbo taken out. It came right out. But the first thing I immediately noticed when I took my turbo out is my oil return line is collapsed. Basically what had happened is the heat from the exhaust manifold actually melted the insulated um, oil return feed. And so oil was actually just backing up into the turbo um, because it had no place to drain. Um, so with that, I immediately recognized the problem and we need to fix it. I went down to uh, Cars Performance, my shop that I go to, and I got a, a new oil drain. I got a host of vibrant parts so that I can make sure that I get this um, fitted correctly onto here. And I'm going to build an, a new oil return line as well. I'm going to just go ahead and put the new turbo I got on and keep this guy as a backup. I'm going to use the exhaust housing for this because I did actually machine this exhaust housing down um, before I put it on the first time so I could properly tighten the coolant line. I did have um, actually one of my subscribers comment that he has the same kit and had been having trouble uh, tighten down the coolant line on the side of the turbo. I as well ran into the same problem but instead of just proceeding on with it I actually machined the top, this side of the exhaust housing because it's plenty thick and I can now fit a socket wrench on there to tighten it. So there's the fix for you. Um, I'm gonna get to work and I'll take you along with me. I wanted to take a moment and just talk about kind of some of the quirks of the CX Racing Turbo as well as how I clocked it to fit on this manifold so that not only my turbo drain line can go as straight as possible down, uh, but that I clear this runner and that I can also get to my uh, coolant line uh, as well as everything else, you know, being able to access the bolts for the flange. Um, so what I did was I clocked the turbo so that um, you know the flange and the inlet you know aren't quite parallel um, but I'm slightly over midsection um, first thing I had to do is mill the side of the exhaust housing down uh, so that I could actually fit this coolant line on there and get a socket on it I did also have to find this special hinged socket which allows me to cock it just a little bit and I can get it on that coolant line uh, so that you can get that coolant line nice and tight, which was a bitch by the way. Um, also different oil restrictor up top here. I did get a, a new one. Uh, this is a precision turbo one. Uh, this is small enough to allow me to fit a socket on top. Uh, if you recall with the CX racing restrictor. 
this was so big you could not get a socket around it to properly tighten it for the oil feed line. Uh, next thing, oh, down at the bottom, I did also slightly grind down the flange right there so that I could um, properly tighten the exhaust housing bolt. And that was about it. So what I did is I actually reused the exhaust manifold, uh, exhaust turbine housing off the old turbo and um, put it on the new turbo, which honestly I think the old turbo is fine. Um, and so I'm basically using the new center section and inlet and then the old exhaust housing because I didn't want to have to regrind that down. Um, so we're looking good, man. I'm just, uh, I'm getting the, I'm, I'm sort of warming up the end of the um, oil drain line in some hot water so that I can slide it up on the barb real easily. I'll get my exhaust sheathing on that and then we'll be able to um, fit it down in here and put it back in. Oh, also I've got to screw my fitting back into my block for my oil drain line. Uh, I took that out so I could, when I went to the shop, I knew what size I had and what I needed. So, right on. We will see you soon. So here is the new turbo drain line. I have that firmly fitted up to the turbo. I have the turbo wrapped, the, the line wrapped. As well, I have a, an additional piece on. I know these zip ties are just going to melt off, but I just want this extra piece that's going to be kind of setting on top of the manifold there just to have a little extra and hey can't hurt to have it there so uh, gonna go ahead and put this bad boy down on in there begin the task of bolting it in place and ready? yeah I'm back. It's Curtis C3. Well, we're about 10 days later. I had the new turbo in, as well as the new um, turbo oil drain line um, that I used the DEI insulated wrap and everything on. And unfortunately, after about a week of driving the car, um, this drain line has decided to burn up as well and it's burned up so bad that it's actually leaking oil. Uh, which, as you know, is bad. Oil, heat, fire, bad. So today, I'm gonna take off the turbo again, which is a nightmare. It's so hard to get the turbo back on. Um, just those back flange bolts are, they're difficult to say the least. So um, today, I'm gonna go ahead and take the turbo off, see if I can't find a different line, and uh, try to get this fixed. I would love to go drifting this weekend. Well, here is turbo drain line number two. I've obviously got a restriction where it's getting kinked under the turbo. Cook the line right through again. Off to find a better solution. All right, YouTube, just to end out this video for you, let you know where we're at. So um, after a few days of toiling with this, trying every different way I could to route, and I just got the turbo just sitting up there, to route that drain line in a different manner, I was unable to get it to work. Um, I purchased AN fitting. I purchased a four, uh, 90 degree AN fitting. I purchased a straight AN fitting. Nothing would work. Uh, so getting on the My Lexus IS forums, I, I was able to contact a guy named um, uh, Brain 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 Tumor, I believe his name is. A uh, real nice guy. Um, he actually um, sent me a link, which I'll show you. To some uh, adapters that will bolt onto the bottom of the T4 turbo flange so that I can um, 
get basically a 45 right off the bottom of the turbo so I can pull it away from that uh, exhaust runner which is stopping me and um, get a new drain line put in. So I should have that in, oh, maybe two days. Uh, so YouTube, I appreciate your patience. I wish I could upload more videos, but this has been a process trying to figure it out, uh, getting the, the new drain line and having it burn up again, realizing what my issues were, uh, finding a fix for them, and now I'll be implementing those. So uh, gonna leave you hanging. Uh, we'll be to be continued this week. Um, I'll have the new parts in Wednesday. It's now Monday. And uh, also, we have BC coils coming today. Can't wait to show you those. All right. Thanks, YouTube. Talk soon.